I have always wanted to see mountains from the inside of a train. So I'm spending the next four days inside this sleeper train, traveling 96 hours from Toronto to Vancouver with hopes of seeing the snow-covered Rocky Mountains for the very first time. I'll be doing this alone, but taking you with me as I learn what it's like to eat, sleep, shower, and try to make friends on a train. We will stop seven times seeing every part of Canada completely covered in heavy snow. Sunrise to sunset, all inside this train with one unfortunate problem. Thank you to BetterHelp for sponsoring this video. All right, I leave in the morning for the train and I think I made a huge mistake. <sighs> I should have invited someone to come with me. Katie is back home in Atlanta and I've been at the house alone for 12 days and the thought of doing a four day train journey by myself. A little lonely. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, I made it to Toronto, and to get to do this in general is such a blessing that I wasn't too worried about feeling low. <laughs> but I did end up asking my Uber driver, do you have any, any tips on how I can make friends on the train? Put aside your hesitation. Great. You know, be nice, and people are looking for nice people. There are so many bad things in the world happening. Everybody wants a little break. Yeah, yeah, I think so too. That's great advice. What's your name? My name is Mohammed. Mohammed may be the most encouraging, wholesome Uber driver I've ever had. And I was really feeling the wind he put in my sails as I walked up to Union Station. My 96 hour solo train journey across Canada was about to begin. Oh, I'm not used to train stations. This is awesome. Where's the train? <laughs> So I'm in the lounge. Didn't know I was gonna have access to a lounge. That's awesome. Going into this, there was a fear that I would potentially be the youngest person on the train. That is very much not the case. There are people of every age and everyone's got a big fat smile on their face because they know they're about to hop on the Polar Express. As I walked around the lounge, I didn't find any poorly animated children, but I did find a poorly animated version of the train I'll be riding. It looked better in person. <laughs> oh, this is exciting. Oh, I'm really excited. This is my room. Yeah. Okay, great. Aboard the Canadian, there's basically five tiers of seating. At level one is economy, which are basically your standard seats for anyone not doing the four-day journey. Level two, you have berths, which is a fun word. These are essentially seats that turn into beds. And we've got cabins for one, cabins for two, and finally, the almighty prestige class, coming in at 8,000 US dollars. Because of my dear friends at BetterHelp, I was lucky enough to afford the cabin for two option. <laughs> I've dreamt of this for a long time, and I'm very thankful. All right, so we got two seats, one for me, one for, I guess, my backpack. I got this beautiful window, hello. I assume the bed's gonna come down somehow. A closet. Please and thank you. I found the sink, I found the john, I found whatever this is, and then finally I spotted the one single piece of art hanging in the room. Now I didn't know I could make such a sassy little pose, but in this moment it proves my utter disbelief in a world where someone decided to put this painting in a vacation room. I also had no idea that I'd spend the next four days writing a song about it. Okay, oh my gosh. So yeah, anyways, now I'm gonna go find the, the dome room. Uh, and that seems like a pretty good place to, to say ta-ta to Toronto. Ta-ta, Toronto. <laughs> the train started moving, which I totally kept my cool about. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, we're moving, we're moving. Ah, ah. And then I obviously didn't want to miss the grand send off, so I headed to the dome car with no idea where I was going. It's worth noting that this is kind of like a mental health retreat for me because at the end of last year, I experienced a little thing called a little thing called burnout for the very first time. It led to a lot of emotions that I didn't really understand how to process. Well, that's vulnerable. So going into this new year, I've decided to take my mental health a little more seriously, which is why I'm excited that BetterHelp is the sponsor of this video. Thank you, BetterHelp. We're inside the train right now. Yes, you are. BetterHelp makes starting therapy easier and honestly less intimidating. Oh, hello, I know hey. you. Oh, you're talking to yourself? Oh, I was, I was talking to myself. <laughs> I just started my first session last week after my wife encouraged me to start. And honestly, 
a life-changing thing. Sure, but why are you just now starting? I think I've always been intimidated by the cost, as well as just the idea of doing a session at some random person's office. Yeah, same. But BetterHelp's mission is to make these sessions more affordable and convenient for you. So all you have to do is video chat if you want to do it face-to-face. -face. Or you can use messaging. They'll connect you with one of their 30,000 therapists based on your needs, okay? But if you don't like the therapist, all you have to do is tell them and they'll connect you with a new one for free. I like free. So join over 4 million people who've used BetterHelp to start living a healthier and happier life. Click the link in the description or go to betterhelp.com slash Okay, let's go. Are you going to the dome? Yes. Okay. Way far back. Okay, I've never been, so I don't know. I was just there and I forgot my camera. Oh gosh, do you want to lead the way? Lead the way. I don't know where I'm going. What's your name? Camille. Camille Preston. Nice to meet you. Camille was nice enough to give me a tour of the entire train. There were only around 80 people on the train compared to busier seasons where there can be up to 500, so that was kind of nice. This train was huge. She showed me the dining car, coffee stations, the game room, the lounge, prestige class, and the bar. We are now in the very back of the train, AKA the caboose, where we finally arrived to the dome car, and I was excited. It was pretty cool to see Toronto from this perspective, but it definitely got me excited for day four, because on day four, we were gonna see the Rocky Mountains. But honestly, what was more exciting was the fact that Muhammad's advice was working, and I was talking to everyone. Adrian, Hi. nice to meet you. We were, we were both saying that we watched a lot of YouTube videos of people doing this. That's a great shot. I feel like when the trains turn like that, it's so yeah. good. What's your name? Uh, Xavier. Xavier Preston. Have you seen these? No, this never the, seen that. This is the DJI. Uh, wow. It's so great. I mean, it's stable. Yeah, it's pretty good, right? Wow, it's wonderful. We'll be around shortly and we'll take everybody's order. So enjoy, folks. Thank you. Okay, yeah. Hooray! <laughs> we were celebrating because it was time for train meal number one. Oh, I'm so hungry. Yeah, I can't wait. Yeah, yeah. I didn't film this part, but as you walked into the dining car, the hostess basically chooses who you sit with. Good soup. For a solo traveler like myself, that was really nice. That's how I met Nina, James, and Ariel. Are we supposed to eat this like a sandwich? <laughs> Nina and James fell in love at a hostel in New Zealand. Ariel is a trained opera singer who loves classical music. She actually encouraged me to listen to the song that you are listening to right now. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. The food was so good, and our conversation was really refreshing, to be honest. I'm not sure which train was on the better course, the Canadian sleeper train or the friendship train. In any case, it was time to head to the game room for a Canadian beer tasting alongside some Canadian trivia. And a banana. I also had a banana. Canadian trivia is beginning now. Right. Oh, yeah. What sports trophy was established by Governor General Earl Grey? Think about it. Think about it. Earl Grey. The great Yeah! There we go. I, I knew that. I, I just didn't say it. You knew that? Oh, yeah, I was okay, for sure. Okay, what's the sport? That's not important. <laughs> <laughs> the fact that I'm laughing like this with absolute strangers is just the most mind-blowing thing to me. And this stranger, the one that just called me out in front of everyone, well, that's my kind of friend. Her name is Cassie, and she's on the train celebrating her and her partner's 30th wedding anniversary. They both have a lot of experience riding trains, as well as a lot of experience knitting. And let's just say one thing led to another, and well, Cassie started teaching me how to knit too. Now, knitting is hard, and Cassie is a knitting Yoda. She was very patient with me and said that we were gonna work on this every day till I figured it out. What am I knitting exactly? Well, we decided bookmark felt like an appropriate direction, and I finished one solid hour of knitting at the sunset. This was my progress, and then all of a sudden we were in. Oh, man. <laughs> I actually couldn't get the words out, it was so cold. I don't know how to breathe air this cold, that is so crazy. <sighs> The stops would be pretty short, but the crew encouraged us to always try to get some exercise whenever we got off the train. I can't touch my toes. Then got back on the train to thaw out during dinner, but I was a little early, as was Kiara. We both sat in the game room waiting for dinner, and she asked to draw my portrait. I said yes, and quickly learned that she is from South Korea. She loves traveling and also loves drawing portraits of strangers. She said her favorite part is the conversation that happens while she draws. She was very kind and gave me a smaller, cuter nose than I actually have, which I really appreciated. Identical. I had dinner with Dave, Kathy, and Quintus. How's dinner, guys? Good? Yep. <laughs> we had steak and it was delicious. It was a little challenging to finish though because Dave had me laughing the whole time. And I'm back at my room. I know this is mine because there's duct tape on it. 
and I needed to do that because every single one looks exactly the same. All right, it's time for bed. You know what that means. Day one debrief. But first, I need to press this button. I've wanted to do that all day. We're supposed to once we're ready for our beds to get lowered down. This is Haiti. He is our train car attendant, and we fist bump sometimes. Thank you, thank you. Great day, great day. Meeting all of these really great people that I would have never talked to if it wasn't for something like this was more medicine for like my brain and my heart than I would have thought. And that was just so great. Big curveball, to be honest. I thought it was gonna be hard making one friend. It's day two, it's day two. I'm about to explain how I slept to you. It's day two, it's day two. Get ready for some details from my sleep review. Slept pretty good. Mm. Let's get some coffee, huh? And I'm gonna need it because we've got a busy day. On the agenda, exercise, write a song about the weird painting in my room, investigate the shower situation, and finally explore the freezing cold temperatures of Winnipeg. Also, I'm a zombie in the morning, but I think I hide it pretty well. Howdy, how are you? Great, how are you? Great, better than you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna work on that. But like Jim Hopper famously said, mornings are for coffee and contemplation. Coffee and contemplation. After I finished breakfast, I made my way up to the dome car to read my book. Overnight, we went this far, and now we're approaching Western Ontario. I've honestly never seen more frozen lakes in my life. It definitely made me want to come back in the fall when it looks like this. Looking out the window and seeing such beauty was really a recharging way to start the day. All right, I just went back to the room to put on the old jacket because we just stopped in whatever this place is called. Oh, gosh, the air in my lungs hurts to breathe, wow. Oh, what is that? You know, I'm not sure, but it happened to my weak California lungs every single time I stepped off the warm train into the cold. I was hoping that my daily exercise would warm up my lungs a bit when I found Kathy from dinner last night doing some jumping jacks. Get it, Kathy, get it. Get it, girl. Me and Kathy doing yeah. jumping jacks. We love Canada. So wait, is today your birthday? Yeah. The jumping jacks were a way better call than running. Yes. Yes, yes, high fives, high fives, yes, yes, yes. Good see you on there. Good seeing you, Dave. We got back in the train just in time for lunch where I was sat with some of my favorite people that I met on the four-day journey. This is John, his dad, Jim, and Annette. Hello. Hello. <laughs> After seeing my camera, Jim started talking to me about his dream to start a podcast on YouTube because he just retired after a long career as a philosophy professor and now he has time to do the podcast. I was so excited about it, I ended up writing down a few tips for which editing program I thought he should use. As I did that, he explained to me how helpful AI has been in his research process. The even crazier part is that- Because he'll be 91 years old. 91? January 17th. And we're talking about chat. GPT. I love it. His son John explained that they're on the train to celebrate his dad's birthday, which is on the last day of our journey. He's a lawyer from DC and takes inspiration from his dad to never stop learning with age, which really inspired me to write a song about the weird painting in my room. Sorry, bad transition. I just spent the past two hours making a song about and it's awesome, but it's not done yet. I'm going to show it to you later. In the meantime, I smell. That's okay, because there is a shower on the train somewhere. I guess that means it's time for train shower investigation. I begin with this plastic bag. Inside of it is supposedly a towel provided by the train. At the end of my hall is a public shower. I head in that direction, nervous that someone will also be trying to shower. Imagine if this guy looked at me and said, hey, you stupid idiot, I'm trying to shower. That would be a nightmare. I proceed cautiously. Next, I step inside to see if I fit. With five centimeters to spare, one could say the fit was perfect. I then go toe to toe with the temperature knob. After sparring for a few rounds, I proceed to have a really great showering experience. Very warm, I even shaved. Unfortunately, shaving for me results in realizing that I look the exact same. And there was also a towel in that plastic bag. I'm clean, I'm showered. You know what that means. Winnipeg. <laughs> Give it up for Haiti, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, Haiti. We've got like 30 minutes. I'll show you guys what Winnipeg's all about. Oh, oh, it's cold everywhere. Oh, very cold here. I had salmon for dinner, pie for dessert, and just like that, day two is done. 
It's day three, it's day three You're about to hear how my sleep was for me It's day three, it's day three Don't worry, my review is absolutely free Didn't sleep great Because we are in a new time zone And shocker, it's cold again but there's no time to worry about that because there's a lot in the train agenda for today. We'll begin with exercise because Kathy and I are on a roll and we got to keep it going. Knitting. I didn't do it yesterday. I just can't miss that again. I got to work on my train song and then end the day with a good old fashioned deep convo. Thanks to the time zone debacle, I missed breakfast. So I had a muffin, banana and coffee instead. We woke up in the middle of a province called Saskatchewan. Less trees, more prairies. With the Rocky Mountains just one day ahead. We saw bison, which was cool. I don't think I've ever seen bison in real life. And then I journaled a little bit, and honestly, starting the day like this every day has just been so cool. Look at these trains just riding by me like that. I had this little smirk on my face because I knew what was coming. Oh, so good, so good. Yeah. Kathy, you want to say anything to the internet? Thanks good. Thanks for watching. Uh, a like and subscribe. <laughs> After our workout, it was time for lunch. I got to eat with Jim and John again with our new friend, Ken. He just retired from the Canadian army and was taking a solo ski trip to Jasper. Ken had great stories and fit into our little crew very well. This was our view as we ate. After lunch, I bumped into Cassie for knitting lesson number two. This one was definitely longer and I messed up way more than the first time but we had just such a fun time talking and I learned about her life as a teacher in Canada. Eventually, I did find my groove though and did multiple lines without messing up. Cassie was very proud. Then we played bingo and somehow Cassie and I both won in the exact same moment. I don't know how that happens. <laughs> After that, I was back in my room. I will now continue my song about the weird in my room. Yeah, yeah, the melody. Hey, my name is Dan, the guardian angel, the perfect piece of art. Right inside of your cabin. So good. You may hate it or you may love it. Time will tell because it's time for dinner. I was lucky enough to sit with the same crew from lunch and this was my favorite conversation I had on the train for a few reasons. It basically started off by all of us realizing that we are each 30 years apart from each other. I'm 30, John and Ken are 60, and Jim is 90. I've never really been a part of a conversation like that. We talked a lot about fatherhood, actually. The impact our dads have on all of us, even for someone as old as Jim. We talked about how a father doesn't have to be a biological one. We talked about what love means. And they really just poured into me a lot in reference to the life that I have ahead of me as the youngest guy at the table profound stuff and I just felt thankful to be sitting there. Day three, complete. It's day four, it's day four. You're about to hear how my sleep was once more. It's day four, it's day four. Get ready for a sleep review you can't ignore. Get ready for a sleep review you can't ignore. Today's the day. Today's the day. Oh my god. Today's the day. We finally see it all. It's day four. You know what that means. Hey, editing Preston, tell me what it means. After starting in Toronto three long days ago, we will finally be able to lay our eyes on the almighty Rocky Montañez today. Train agenda. We're gonna open the day with the song. Then we're gonna throw Jim a surprise 91st birthday because today is his actual birthday. And then of course, the Rockies. The whole train was buzzing, even though we were still a few hours away. I grabbed a coffee, journaled for a bit, listened to some music, then started getting nervous that it was gonna be too cloudy to actually see the mountains. So I decided to suppress that feeling and focus on the fact that I have to finish the song. Pressing stuff, really important. <laughs> I, just, I just press play, I forgot. Yep, that's funny. Gosh, it's so stupid. Uh, try your best to imagine Just a simple painting of two little It was time to surprise Jim. Kiara drew his portrait to keep him distracted while we all finished signing his birthday card. When I saw how many signatures the card had, I realized that Jim made a lot of friends in these four days. 
One by one, everyone began collecting inside the game room. All of the friends that he has made on the train so far are inside this car. He's gonna walk in and we're all gonna yell. We're all gonna yell surprise, right? Okay. <laughs> in trying new things. So the lesson that you're teaching me is this. What? To never stop pushing the envelope and embracing change. Keep pushing it. And as if this moment couldn't get any sweeter, suddenly we found ourselves at the Rocky Mountains. Embracing the change, as John would say, isn't always the most comfortable thing. But I would say that it's the most rewarding. But now for the moment you all have truly been waiting for, for the first time ever, ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the train song. Close your eyes with me and try your best to imagine the perfect piece of art right inside of your cabin. It's not a flower painting, not even a baboon. It's just a simple painting of two little raccoons. In the United States of America, some people refer to these as trash pandas. Trash pandas. Can't think of a better animal to look at on vacation. Raccoons are the inspirational animal you want to see on vacation. See on vacation, it's the best painting of all. 